Hi, my name is Lauren Louie, and I'm a project scientist in the Adam Arkins Lab at Lawrence Berkeley National Lab. And I'll be talking to you today about how to utilize KBase to assemble high quality isolate genomes and metagenome assembled genomes. So the first part of my talk will just be the motivation for obtaining these high quality genomes and the challenges associated with that. And I'll be in the context of the Enigma scientific focus area. Then I'll talk about two apps. The first one is Unicycler, which is a tool by Ryan Wick. He's at the University of Monash in Australia. And this is for doing hybrid isolate assemblies. And John Mark Shandonia has been helping us implement this in KBase. And the second app is called YORG, which is a tool that I designed with Torben Nielsen, and it's for circularizing and improving metagenome assembled genomes, or MAGs. And Sean Jungbluth has been helping us implement this in KBase. So just for context, uh, when, you know, way back when we only had Sanger reads um, and started trying to assemble microbial genomes, people tried to aim for a single perfect chromosome for these genomes. But with high throughput sequencing, we've kind of gotten to good enough assemblies. Um, they're not complete, but you can see the gene content. And also with metagenomes, it's pretty difficult to assemble complete genomes because of the, the sample complexity of those. And so just to kind of give some context about the types of genomes that people are using these days, this was a compared genomic study of pseudomonas syringae genomes. And this is a histogram of the number of contigs in these genomes. And you can see that a lot of these genomes actually had thousands of contigs. Um, personally, I only, I like to use genomes with less than 50 contigs and, but that's only this first bin here <laughs> of the histogram. So, you know, how can we get back to more complete genomes? Um, because in, even in these compared genomic studies, using fragmented genomes can be a little scary because if there's a gene on the end of a contig, you might not predict it because it's you only have half of the gene. Um, so within Enigma, we're trying to get back to this for our own studies. So the reason why we want these complete genomes is because we're doing these compared genomic studies. Like I mentioned, we'd also like to link the isolates that we have to our metagenomic samples and also to help enable synthetic community design. So the Enigma scientific focus area is focused on the microbiology of the shallow subsurface. So we do a lot of metagenomics and we're also doing isolates to try to characterize our site. And so we're aiming to have thousands of isolates. And for these studies, we, um, we'd like to have as many complete genomes as possible. So the challenges that we face is, like I mentioned, metagenome, assembled genomes, it's very difficult to actually complete those. Um, but even for isolates, it's very difficult because of short read sequencing, just the nature of it. You need long reads to help overcome the assembly issues from short read sequencing. And so the task that we've given ourselves in Enigma is to design a pipeline and automate the sequencing of these thousands of isolates that we're trying to get. So just to kind of provide a little bit more information about why you need long reads, uh, is because here is a typical short read assembly. You get your DNA, you sequence it, you assemble the reads into these contigs, and modern assemblers will output these assembly graphs. And so this particular graph and uh, represents three different possibilities for a genome. You could have this uh, green one with the red piece or this blue one with the red piece, or you can traverse the entire graph and get this. And the reason why you have these three possibilities is because this red piece is a repeat. And so this is one reason why assemblers will produce fragmented assemblies because it will not circularize um, if, it, if it's not sure if it's one of these three possibilities. And so this happens, especially if you have multiple SSU copies. So if you have long reads, which I am simulating here with this yellow line, is if you have a long read that spans the repeat, then you know you have to have this blue part and this green part in the chromosome. And so this is the correct 
genome for this particular graph. It's more complicated than that, but this illustrates some of the ways that long reads can help with actually finishing these assemblies. So in Enigma, uh, we have, this is our pipeline. So we get the isolates and we do the sequencing and assembly and then we have these downstream um, applications. But so far, um, we've worked out how to efficiently get out high molecular weight DNA. And we've also chosen to do nanopore and Illumina sequencing uh, because it's the most cost and time efficient for us to get these assemblies. And so the challenge now is to help automate and disseminate the information. So this is how KBase is helping us. So not only it within Enigma making the assembly more accessible, um, this is also now accessible to people outside of Enigma. So if you just have the data and you don't have the computational resources, um, you can try to assemble these high quality genomes. But also uh, now we can share uh, all, of, we can share these assemblies because we, once they're in KBase and assembled, we can share them out with other people in Enigma and other collaborators. So I asked um, KBase if they could implement Unicycler for me and they did. And so I'm just gonna show a quick example of how to use it. So this is public data. So the input for Unicycler is just Illumina and Nanopore data. You could also use PacBio data if you have it. Um, the output is a FASTA file with the assembly in it. So the Illumina data could be, if you have, you could have two files for the forward and reverse reads, or you can have inter, an interleaved file. Importing the Nanopore data is the same. Um, you just get the FASTQ file and then you select the nanopore um, as the option. And then you wanna trim your Illumina reads. So the quality of the reads will affect your assembly. So you wanna trim them. And then finally you input the reads objects into the Unicycler app. So the Illumina and the nanopore reads. And then if you're an advanced user, you can decide if you want the space error correction um, to be on or off. And then what you get out is an assembly object and you can download the FASTA file. And John Mark also implemented a uh, cost analysis so you can see how many contigs and the stats on the assembly. So one thing that uh, we have not implemented yet is actually telling you if the genome is completely circularized, but you can check this in the FASTA header. It'll tell you if it's circular or not. This is the output that Unicycler does um, this is something we might implement in the future, but Unicycler is in beta right now and you can try it out. So what getting these circular genomes has done for us is it, like I said, it's facilitating these uh, comparative genomic studies within Enigma. So here are some examples of what we're doing. We have uh, eight arthrobacter genomes that the Chakraborty lab is looking at. Um, we also are doing this big pseudomonas study. So we're focused on these 12, on um, a group of 12 pseudomonas genomes, but we're also comparing them to publicly available genomes that we've able been, that we've been able to circularize as well. Um, and then we have these five Rodanobacter genomes that we've uh, gotten from our, our isolates and also from two publicly available isolates. So in regards to this Rodanobacter, this is actually, this is a genus that is interesting for our site because we have uh, sample sites that have high uh, metals and low pH, which Rodanobacter is resistant to. And so we're able to compare these isolate genomes to our metagenome assembled genomes. And this is a collaboration with um, the Joe lab at the University of Oklahoma. And so this bin is interesting because it has a plasmid that's similar to what these isolates um, have, but the main chromosome isn't that similar. So this is ongoing research, um, but in just mentioning mags, so that brings us to the second app I'm gonna talk about, which is YORG. And um, this is, a, like I said, a tool that I developed with Torben Nielsen. So people like to use this analogy for 
metagenomics, it's like the genomes are like puzzles and then you dump all the puzzle pieces together and try to assemble it. But metagenomics is actually worse than that. It's actually like you're putting everything into a blender and then trying to assemble it because um, the way the assemblers work is you break the reads up into kamers. So that's like breaking up the puzzle pieces into even smaller pieces. So this makes it very difficult to circularize the genomes even more than um, just like for the sample complexity. So uh, this is the tool that we came up with. Um, the first part of it is just a normal metagenome assembly. You clean your reads, you assemble them in the contigs, and then you try to bin the contigs into genome bins. And so this is where YORG comes in. So let's say you have a bin that you want to improve or try to circularize. And so we use this tool called Mirabate to map the reads back. And this will, act, will help you extend the contigs. This is very similar to how people try to get mitochondrial genomes out of the human genome. And so you do this inner process of mapping the reads back and reassembling um, until you get one of these three outcomes, which is one, circularization. Two, item potents means that you can't extend the contigs anymore. Or three, you get chaos. And so this happens because um, Mira is an overlap based assembler and it actually can expose some of the misassemblies that happen with camera based assembly. So the advantages of circularizing mags, especially because, you know, we they're not from isolates, right? So uh, you have you, you have a, an assurance that you have most of you have all of the gene content of the genome. There's no contamination, and then this also can use be used as a reference collection for future metagenomes you can map back if you're sampling from the same site. And then also because you have complete genomes, you can look at genome context. And you can also link protein um, gene content to the ribosomal RNA genes for 16S analysis. So in this particular study that we did, we circularized 34 CPR genomes. So that was a, that's actually a lot for context because when we started this, there were only about 40 or 50 CPR genomes that had been circularized and there's no isolates for these. So that was quite a big um, contribution to the number of genomes for this group of species. And we also were able to circularize some megaphage. Uh, so in terms of the advantages, so we were able to see that there's a clade specific pattern of unlinked ribosomal operons um, in some of the CPR. So these are genomes from the study. And so when I say unlinked ribosomal operons, it means the 16S is decoupled from the 23S and sometimes also the 5S, or they're actually on opposite strands. And so all of the genomes, almost all of the genomes here fit, fit these last two categories. The other thing that we noticed was um, this gene called RNase P RNA, which is essential for almost all life. Uh, we couldn't detect it, but since it was circular, we decided to try to see if it was just not being picked up by the models and that's what happened. And so they have these weird forms and that's why they weren't being picked up. But we wouldn't have figured that out if we hadn't circularized the genomes. So YORG is not quite finished yet. John's still working on it. But this is what it looks like right now. The input is just the bin to be improved. Um, and then the Lumina reads used for the original assembly. And another nice thing that Sean's implementing with this is um, implement, so you can, implementing Circo so you can see the coverage of your bin after you finish it. So I just like to wrap up by saying that to, in order to obtain these high quality genomes, and also to use them effectively to link genotype to phenotype, you need to have a good collaboration between the wet lab and computational efforts. So first off, you need the isolates. And um, if you want diverse isolates, you have to try many different things. So, and then you also need phenotype data. So I encourage you to go see the Enigma poster so you can see what we're trying to do. But also the input into the sequencing. So 
you want high molecular weight DNA for the long reads and you need deep enough sequencing for both unicy the unicycler input data and the YORG input data or else um, it makes it much more difficult to get good results. So I just like to thank everybody at KBase um, that's been helping me. And I'd also like to especially thank Torben Nielsen. He collaborated with me on all of the projects I talked about today. Uh, the Arkin Lab and all of my Enigma collaborators. So thank you for watching my talk and I'm happy to answer any questions. <laughs>